Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. At the end of July, I came to the conclusion I had been spending far too much money and as such, I put up a video at the start of this month saying I have overspent and I'm going on an emergency no buy. No buy was activated. So this video at the end of the month, it's the 1st of September now, so I've done a no buy month. This video is about checking in with you, telling you how that went, talking about anything that I kind of went through within that month, what challenged me, things that I noticed or learned, and then discussing what the plans are for September. So without further ado, let's get on into it. First of all, in terms of how the no buy went, the no buy went exactly how I thought it would go, which was that it was fine. It was actually super welcome, if I'm honest. I felt, and I think I even said this in the video where I introduced it, I felt relieved to be on a no buy. So if you didn't watch the video introducing it, basically what happened was I started trying to budget at the start of this year. I never really committed to it, that's 100% on me. I didn't kind of make firm rules, I didn't push it out in the world that I was doing it, I didn't tell you guys that I was doing it. So there wasn't really anyone holding me accountable to it except myself and I wasn't very good at enforcing that. And basically what happened was I spiralled every single month. You know, I think I was fine the first couple of months and then I went a little bit over and then I went a little bit more over and then I just went like so far over and every single month I spent more and more money. You know, it was it was like, I was going to say it was like this, it was a bit more like this. It was a lot quicker than a, a line going this angle would indicate, it was a bit more like, oh, and we're here. So to achieve this kind of angle of an increase, obviously it was eating not just more of my money, but more of my time, more of my energy, more of my effort, and that I was spending shopping and on shopping behaviours, on looking for things to want, on browsing, on coming up with ideas for things that I thought were going to enrich my life because I was looking for something to get a shopping hit with, etc. The thing was, I had tracked all of my spending up to the end of May, and quite genuinely, I think, although I had spent far too much money, and I wouldn't be on a no buy if I was denying that, so I'm not denying that for a, a minute, I definitely spent more money than I was comfortable with the fact that I spent, but there was a lot of sort of circumstantial things that contributed to some of that spending, you know, brands that were shutting down, closing down sales, sort of one-off opportunities to get things. So I didn't really regret any of that, but in June and July, definitely what happened, although I still like what I bought in June and July, I stopped tracking it, I stopped even trying to be accountable for it. And definitely with June and July, I had then just got into the habit of buying things. So I just kept going with the habit and I'd sort of ticked off a lot of the things that I would have wanted. So I got into that point where I was actively shopping rather than just spending money, if that makes sense. When I was spending money, it was on things that I had wanted for a really long time. There was a lot of vampires' wife dresses bought. So although that was spending money, it didn't really involve decisions because I had already made those decisions. Those things were things I had fallen in love with forever ago, you know, things I'd wanted for years in some cases. Whereas June and July spending was different because it was more, I'm in the habit of this now so I'm going to keep going with it, but I've kind of ticked all the, the big items. But also in that way that there are things that are on my wish list, like really big things, you know, I would love a Chanel top handle bag. I really like the Louis Vuitton Beau Chapeau bag. Those are things that at some point in my life I would love to buy. I mean, obviously we're talking about hand, but I think the Louis Vuitton one is currently four and a half thousand pounds. It'll probably be like ten and a half thousand pounds by the time I would get around to buying it. The Chanel, again, with the price increases, I think right now that bag is sort of six and a half thousand or something like those are not things that I would have said were in my budget for this year but I have spent enough money this year that I could have bought one or other of those bags in fact I could have bought one of those bags and been well on my way to buying the second one with the amount of money that I've spent but what happened was I was in that habit in June and July and I wanted the addiction was back like that hit that wanting to shop again that was back but I also kind of knew I'd been spending a lot of money, so I knew I wasn't going to go tick any more big ticket items off my wish list. But that involved me then starting to look for things to purchase. So it involved a lot of energy, it involved a lot of time. That's what shopping does. It's not just the money side of it, it's that it saps your time and energy if you let it and if you're not disciplined with it. And of course I need to underscore this by saying, although I'm saying that in one hand, on the other hand, I'm I'm not aiming to be somebody who doesn't engage ever with shopping. I don't think I'm really a fashion person as such. Um, you know, I really couldn't tell you what 
it's currently like trending as such in that sense but I like clothes, I like bags, I like things that I find visually appealing it's just that they're not necessarily fashion items so when I say I like fashion I mean I like clothes, I like aesthetically pleasing things, I don't necessarily like fashion in terms of trends and whatever but that also becomes its own danger because I think once you get to that point you start going but I know that I'm not buying this because it's in fashion to follow fashion, I'm buying this because I really like it and things become even more justifiable when you're somebody who will actively be like oh, I'm not really into fashion trends so you start justifying more because you think this is classic, this is me, this is I found my style, I know I love this it's not a trend, I'm not investing in a fad but you're still investing a lot of money but anyway, the point that I was trying to make there before we went on that tangent is that although I'm saying about how shopping saps your time and energy as well as your money if you're not disciplined with it I'm also fully holding my hands up to say that my end goal is not to be somebody who doesn't care at all about clothes or makeup or any of that I love that stuff that is part of the issue I just don't love how much time energy and money I was spending on that stuff so that's it's more about reining it in than it is trying to get to a point where I, I'm forever no longer interested you know that's not the goal so basically the no buy was absolutely fine I didn't break it and I felt really relieved to be on it it felt safe I felt like I was like in my little cocoon and I could just breathe again I felt like my shoulders dropped everything sort of just got a little bit less tense I hadn't I don't think realized how completely wound up I was with it again until I stopped it I mean I must have to some degree noticed it but I think what I noticed more was the finance side of it rather than the, the sort of impact it was having on me so the finance side was enough that I was like ah we need to stop this but the the real impact that I felt straight away because one month doesn't fix overspending of multiple months let's be honest about that but the the sort of personal relief that I felt like just that oh, that was the main thing I felt with being on a no buy now I know I've just said that one month of not buying anything doesn't make up for accumulating months on months on months of overspending I do just want to make clear again I did say this in the last video but I think some people kind of missed it from some of the comments that I got and um, this is not a debt situation although I've spent more money than I am happy to think that I have spent I have spent on a debit card I've not spent on a credit card and the money was there I had saved that money and it was money that was always going to be spent but it was money that was coming out of my holiday accounts things like that it wasn't I'm not draining my house deposit either to buy handbags like that's that's not what this is this is about the fact that I was overspending for what I was comfortable with but I wasn't overspending in the the sense that I was spending money I didn't have I was spending money that I didn't really want to that I had that I wanted to spend on other things on the things I was buying the money that I spent was money that was mine I did not spend money that I didn't have I just spent more than I was comfortable with so I did get a couple of comments like you know t talking about like why didn't I sell some of my handbags and uh, you know talking about debt management and things like that which that's not really relevant to me and um, obviously there are lots of people that that is very relevant to but that's that's not the angle that I'm coming at this from this isn't like a I don't know how to phrase this like it is a need because it's something I need to learn to do and learn to get on top of but it's not a need in that I am you know in like real difficulty if that makes sense I think I could end up in real difficulty if I don't get on top of it but it, we're not there yet so I do just want to make that really clear because there's maybe there probably isn't a sense of urgency to my videos if you think it is that kind of situation because it's not this is about me personally managing it it's not about me like needing to manage it for legal reasons or debt reasons or any of that so anyway the no buy was fine but I think what it kind of brought up for me is that the no buy was fine because it's a very clear just not buying anything situation there's no sort of decisions to be made there's no um, justifications there's no going down a little hole of like oh but if we give up this we could have this or blah 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 and we could maybe make this or we could pull this back next month or wh whatever it's just a very clear no that works a lot better for me than budgeting because 
and I, I don't want to say every time I budget I fail because I feel like that's getting me into the mindset of being like well I've already accepted that I'm going to fail at budgeting do you, do you know what I mean I feel like I need to not use that language but also that's kind of the case of what's happened but I also probably set myself up because I say oh, I like you know you you believe what you tell yourself and I consistently go back to being like this is easy for me because it's a clear rule in a way that budgeting has a flexibility that I can abuse and that I do have a history of abusing let's be honest but one of the reflections that I had from doing the no buy the no buy functioned in two ways last month first of all it put a solid break on the spiraling that was happening that was great that was needed love that but the other thing is as much as it doesn't make up for months of overspending it did feel like it started to scrape back for those months of overspending. It felt like it started to balance them just that tiny bit. Didn't make up for them completely, but it balanced them a little bit. And it made me realise I am okay with that. And if budgeting is going to be an issue for me, do I maybe trick myself around the budgeting thing by saying, say for example, my budget monthly is £250. But what I do is say, okay, so annually that's £3,000. And maybe do I have, say, three months of the year that I shop in. And then I also, after each month of shopping, I do a three-month no-buy. You know, because the no-buy is fine. Whereas if I am thinking about spending £250 a month, that has gone out of control before. So is that possibly going to suit me better if I give up with this concept of trying to have a monthly budget sort of think of it as a yearly budget without thinking of it as a budget and say it's in a thousand pounds budget once every four months essentially so three months that i can shop in and three months that i would be on a no buy on a rotation and i think although obviously there's like the big things that i would really like like the chanel bag or the louis vuitton bag and you're not going to get that for a thousand pounds if that if i had a, th an a thousand pounds budget i feel like i would definitely feel very satisfied with what i would be shopping for in that month that i was shopping i feel like that would let me shop in a way that wouldn't feel that restricted and i think i would maybe make better choices because i think when i started at the start of this year i was trying to have a budget and when I had that smaller monthly budget I was immediately in this headspace of trying to get as much for it as possible rather than investing maybe in the the wisest way in things that I really wanted so I'm kind of considering that for next year is possibly it's budgeting by being on a no buy you know that way when people talk about intermittent fasting where you eat in an eight hour window and then fast for a 60 or however different people do different things it probably still comes down to calories but that you can only consume within a set window so you don't need to think about the calories you're consuming because you've got a smaller window to consume them in so theoretically you naturally get into a calorie deficit with intermittent fasting the same kind of principle in would I intermittently fast around shopping I feel like I'd be okay with that and I feel like maybe I'd be more successful with that at the end of a year when I have gone, this is shopping, this is no buy time, rather than constantly trying to stick to a budget every single month for 12 months and having that temptation in place if the temptation and the moderation is what I struggle with. So that was something that had kind of come to me through being on the no buy this month. Something else I took away from this month through being on the no buy was that as well as quieting the noise in my mind of like all the effort and energy that we've discussed putting into shopping it quietened all the transactions in my bank because I wasn't necessarily keeping everything I was buying like say in July I had a couple of nights out for my birthday I also went to Liverpool and um, so you know before holidays before nights out I, I did that thing where I ordered multiple outfits and I didn't keep them all and I wasn't ever intent and I would order things in more than one size so there were all these transactions in my bank of what was buying and what was being returned and whatever. Stopping all of that, I think, shone a light last month on other things that I spend money on. So, for example, the main one I noticed is that I go to the supermarket and I think about myself as doing a weekly shop. But the truth is, 
I go to the supermarket and I do theoretically quite a big weekly shop and I get that weekly shop for sort of £80 say and I think in my head I spend £80 a week at the supermarket but actually what happens is that particularly with vegetables and fresh meat I do a top up shop because the dates aren't great you're not going to get a packet of lettuce that's going to be good in seven days so I actually do like sometimes two top up shops in a week so I'm in the supermarket more than I think I am in the supermarket and those top up shops pretty much add up generally sometimes to like 60% of the weekly shop especially if I do like two to three top up shops because you just you think you're not spending a lot of money and you just tuck extra things in so I do my weekly shop with a list and then I'll be like I need to go in and get more lettuce more cucumber more chicken I need more salmon whatever the thing that I need is I then have to go in for a top up shop and I don't because that's not my big shop I don't go in with a list so I go in and then my eye you know as it does falls on something else like oh the yogurts I like are on offer when they weren't on offer when I came in three days ago I'll just stock up on some extra yogurts oh look there's a new flavour of this let's try that or oh look Ben and Jerry's has got 250 off it we'll just chuck a tub in none of that was on my list because I didn't need it when I did my list for my meal planning for the big shop but all those top-up shops happened and because I had been spending for the last number of months I had not realised that those top-up shops were adding up to what they were adding up to because they were just another transaction amongst a lot of noise in my bank account and let's be honest in June and July I'd got to a point where I didn't want to look at my bank account so I wasn't keeping on top of that I was just looking at the top level going on what's my balance right I'm fine I wasn't looking at why is my balance this and where's all of that going I was just like yeah I've been buying stuff like it is what it is and I'm waiting on returns it's fine but actually like my supermarket shop so in my head it's about 80 pounds a week it's actually probably closer to about 130 pounds a week that I spend at the supermarket because the top up shops in my head don't count and unfortunately right now I think no matter where you shop no matter what supermarket you go to food is just really expensive I don't think there is a way to kind of spend less on food we all need food sell by dates or what they are I, I don't think I can stop doing the top up shops but it's definitely a lesson I learned is that I need to be more disciplined with my top up shops I need to make a list for the top up shops as well and go in and not deviate from that list so I'm not necessarily saying that I've got answers on how to significantly reduce it but I've certainly now at least had the realization that I was not budgeting appropriately in my mind for what I actually spend at the supermarket and as I said I now know that I need to be a bit stricter with the top up shops and go in and treat them as a main shop almost like my second and third main shop of the week with a list and only top up what I actually need to top up on not get distracted because it's just a little shop and it's only another £20 or it's only another £30 or whatever because all of that is adding up and when I had all that noise going on in my bank account I didn't see how that was adding up at all so that was one of the realisations that I had that I think is probably quite applicable to many of us so I hope that might be helpful for some of you. Apologies if the framing has changed my camera just ran out of battery so I had to give it a quick charge and put it back on obviously uh, because I've been rabbiting for absolutely ages and I am dreading editing this video. What we've covered so far, how the no buy went, how it felt to be in the no buy and a couple of the thoughts and realisations that I had from being on the no buy. The next thing I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about, I am going to try and wrap this video up, is that I had four challenges whilst I was on the no buy with things that I wanted to bring in. Um, so I thought I would just kind of talk about my process of thought with each of them. Some of them I've overcome, some of them I'm still not and I'm still a bit sulky that I couldn't buy them. But anyway, let's get into them. So the first things actually were things I could have theoretically bought and they were replacements. So I did have a budget for this month. I was intending to talk about the budget in this video, but I think it'll be far too long. So I think the budget will be the next video. Um, but my replacements are something I could have bought as long as they'd come from my budget. I said at the start of the month that I didn't foresee myself needing any replacements and I think the reason I kind of didn't foresee it is because it wasn't like you know my daily serum or something that I kind of would notice on a daily basis is getting lower. The things that I ran out of, my Elemis Papaya Enzyme Peel, my Origins Out of Trouble Mask and my Patchology Breakout Box. I finished all of those things and I had a massive breakout. Now I have pretty much the same hormonal breakout along my jaw 
at the same time every month and it comes towards the end of the month so I think that's the other thing is that when I was at the start of the month I probably wasn't thinking about the fact that was going to come up. Now I have gone through particularly the Patchology Breakout Box and the Origins Out of Trouble mask much more quickly than I usually would because I took a really bad allergic reaction to an SPF that I was using in sort of May, June kind of time. So I had huge breakouts with that. By the time I had figured out what it was that was causing it and was able to stop using it and start treating it, I had gone through a lot of those breakout products with that. I then had some threading done in July that I think probably my skin hadn't really calmed down enough from the breakout. It must have been June actually if it was still going in July. Um, but I had some threading done and I know it was July because I was in Liverpool and my skin really flared up with it again. I had another huge breakout with that. So yeah, I've gone through those products a lot more quickly than I would usually do. So I wasn't really thinking about the fact I was coming to the end of them. And I would have definitely liked to have been able to buy particularly the Origins mask and the Patchology breakout box um, whilst I was having my hormonal breakouts. So that was quite frustrating that I couldn't buy them and the reason I couldn't buy them wasn't really because of the no buy it partly was because I think part of me just wanted a full month of not buying anything like not even buying replacements just not going to a shop not purchasing anything not going through that exercise of handing over money and being given a physical item I just kind of wanted to stop it completely for a full month so that was part of it the other thing was though August was a really expensive month it was a really busy month I didn't have the budget to buy them there was nothing else that I could have given up and I know that sounds a bit dramatic but like the things that I was doing in August were mainly with other people so I had plans with other people so I couldn't really be like hey I know like we talked about booking this or we talked about doing this but actually I need to buy a, a face mask so I can't anymore and um, so none of that and I didn't want to give up anything that I booked because August is fringe month um, which is a, a theatre festival for anyone who's not into theatre and alongside obviously going to multiple theatre things we went for drinks, we went for dinner, all of that kind of jazz so August was a really expensive month and um, but my budget was basically allocated I didn't have spare budget for replacements this month and I didn't really want to buy anything so that was my first struggle I think what I took from that is that I got through it now I will probably buy those items in September and probably quite quickly in September because I am missing them so when my new budget kicks in in September, or well, kicked in this morning because it's the first of September, not bought them yet, but I suspect I will be buying them quite quickly this month. But I suppose what I really took from not buying them straight away is that sometimes it's okay. Yes, it would have been really nice if I'd had those products that I really know work for my skin when my skin is being stressed out, particularly because with those kind of products, I've actually got my, my collection down to a point where I don't have multiples in the background that I just don't really like as much because I want to use that one. I didn't really have anything I could sub in in the same sense that would do those same jobs. I had to kind of rely on the products that I had that were closest to those things but they weren't those things. They weren't those exact things and I did miss them but it was okay. Nobody died. It's okay to sometimes have to wait or sit something out for a month if you have a lot of other expensive things happening especially in the case of like you know a face mask that's less than 30 pounds it's not forever obviously we want to have things when we want them but sometimes you just have to wait and and that's okay the second thing that i'm going to talk about and this was definitely the biggest challenge this was the closest i came to breaking my no buy and throwing my toys out the pram and that was a dyson air wrap despite the fact i've just said this was like the most difficult thing this is also the most ridiculous thing because I have never tried the Dyson Air Wrap and I have hair that really doesn't hold a style, that goes flat very, very quickly, that struggles to hold volume. So why I would want to spend all of that money on a tool that I haven't ever tried, that I don't know if it will work for my hair because like not a lot of things work for my hair. You know, things that other people really rate and really like doesn't work in my hair or it works for a very short space of time. So I know I've got disobedient hair, but I have taken an absolute notion for this air wrap and this is not a new thing. I, ta I took this notion a little while ago. I actually think I would have bought this earlier in the year if I had noticed there was an offer on in Boots that had money off it and you got bonus points. That offer was on earlier this year and I noticed that offer when it came on later that year for the hair dryer, 
but not the air wrap. And I sent it to Lauren at the time and said, why is this off the hairdryer? I've got the hairdryer, I don't need that, I really want the air wrap. And she was like, oh, I'm sure they've done that offer this year already for the air wrap. So I was kind of primed in my mind that I knew that offer had, had been on in the past and that it might resurface. And I think when I knew there was a chance of the offer, even when I was in my shopping habit at the start of this year, I didn't want to buy it without the offer because I knew the offer was going to come back. Like the offer was like worming its way in there. So the offer came back this month. If you had been wanting to buy a Dyson Air Wrap, this was a great offer to get it on. It had 50 pounds off it, so it was down to 430 pounds. And then you were getting 70 pounds worth of Boots points for buying it. So in my mind, although you were, you were spending 430, but how this worked in my mind was that that took another 70 pounds off it. And also I use Top Cashback. Um, I will actually put my referral code down below if you don't use Top Cashback. You have to remember to click through to what you're buying online from the website. So it's not like an automatic thing. I also use Airtime Rewards, which you link your card to it and it just automatically tracks any merchants that they have agreements with as you buy things. And that comes off of your phone bill. Um, but Top Cashback is actual cashback that goes into a pot and you can take the money out to like you have it in your bank. But you do need to remember to click through. But anyway, Boots is a top cashback website, which I hadn't noticed before. So I think as well, I worked out I would get like 17 pounds of cashback as well, which you don't get immediately. You have to wait about three months. Usually it's about 12 weeks before you get the cashback. But basically there was the 50 pounds off it. And then in my head, there was another 87 pounds off it between the 70 pounds of points and the 17 pounds of cashback. Even though it really wasn't because I was still going to have to pay the £430, I was just going to get that £70 of points to spend in boots at a future date and I was going to get that £17 of cash back in about three months and really £17 like in three months was I going to notice it, you know, like it's nice to have it and I, I just let my cash back build up um, and then I'm planning to take it out and use it to pay for one of my Christmas trips that I've got coming up um, or not pay for the trip but use it for like my food money or whatever on the trip so yes it would have been, I'm not saying I wouldn't have noticed it but like 17 pounds was not going to be a life-changing amount of money to get three months down the line after I spent 430 pounds up front. It was completely ridiculous. And I know that now, sitting here telling you this, being calm about it. But when I was in the grips of that, I, I had myself basically convinced that this thing was, essentially I had it down to basically about 300 pounds in my head rather than 430. And I've never tried it. And I don't know if it's going to work in my hair, but I was like, but if it did work, it's going to be the best thing and I'm going to use it all the time. And I'm going to be really time poor this year. So I had myself convinced that it's going to stop me having to both like fully dry my hair and then style my hair. It's going to save me time and my hair's going to look great and what I, like, I was so convinced I needed this thing. The, basically the reason I didn't buy it is because I was on a no buy. I had the no buy there that said no. It doesn't matter like how much money you think you're saving or how much time you think this is going to save you, you're on a no buy. Like just step away, which I did. And with a bit of calmness, I am still interested in the air wrap and I still would like to possibly purchase it at some point in the future. Again, when that offer is on, I will not be purchasing it until I get that offer because I now know that that offer runs and that, that offer will return. But I would never buy a pair of shoes at £430 without trying them on or if I bought them over distance selling I would be able to send them back you know so I would have that insurance there whereas with a hair tool if you buy it and you use it and it doesn't really work in your hair you can't really return it you've used it you know it's, it's a different thing so in terms of possibly purchasing it I am going to London between Christmas and New Year Lauren and I go every year I'm going to make a point of carving out the time on that trip to go for a blow dry at the Dyson store and have them use the air wrap on me and see how it holds, see how I like it, try it before I buy it rather than jumping in and spending 400 and if it was full price 480 pounds on a hair tool I haven't tried yet. Like I know it sounds so ludicrous but I was so convinced between these offers and the cash back and the bonus points that it was a bargain that I really was being silly not to buy it. So yeah, that was the journey with that. And I think the key thing that we need to take away when you are doing that thing of working yourself into, but there's another 70 pounds off it because you're getting the points and you're getting the cash back. Yes, you're getting those things, 
the 17 pounds is cash back is three months away the 70 pounds of points is only money to spend in boots it's not money in your bank account to spend on what you want it's in boots specifically and also on a side note i have like 150 pounds worth of boots points that i'm weirdly precious about i'm like far more precious with points than i am with actual cash in my bank which is bizarre but anyway there must be something in that as well but yeah if i really wanted something from boots I've got £150 worth of points already. Yes, it's not going to cover either of the two really big things that I'm interested in that Boots sell, which are the air wrap and one of those Philips Lumia laser hair removal devices. You know, the, the £150 isn't touching them. But even adding £70 to that was not going to mean that if I bought the Dyson, I was going to have enough points for the Philips thing. Like, it still wasn't going to be there. Be a nice boost, but it wasn't going to be there. So I think the key thing is to just take that step back and think, yes, you are getting those things back, but not in cash in your bank. It's not more money off the product. £430 or whatever the thing in your item that you're looking at that is on offer is, is still leaving your account. It's not negated by the bonus points or the cash back. One of the other things that helped me to refocus on the fact that I was on the no buy was that I'd seen the Dyson Air Wrap offer one afternoon and I was going to Dublin the next day and I would need, to, it was an online only offer, so I couldn't get it for going away the next day because in my head I was like, if I could get it and I could go click and collect it right now, I could do my hair tonight and then it'd be nice for going away. But I couldn't guarantee that I was going to get it like that afternoon. I have had that happen with Boots Click and Collect before when I've done something that's an online ex exclusive offer or whatever in the morning, picked Click and Collect it to the shop and been able to go get it that afternoon because clearly it's been fulfilled using store stock, but they never guarantee you that so that also helped me step away but to talk about going to Dublin the next thing that tested me was that in the airport Chanel had these beautiful jewels it was like a blush and highlight jewel it was lovely but they were super super similar to my Dolce & Gabbana blush highlight jewels the, co the colour combinations were very much the same there was a peach one with a goldy highlight a pink one with more of a white highlight pretty much would have done the exact same job in my collection and what helped me to just feel okay about walking away from that is that I do my project pans. So basically how my thought process there worked was that this year in my project pan I have both a highlight and a blush and because I have been using that blush and highlight from my project pan fairly exclusively this year to hit the goals that I'm trying to hit on them I think I've used my Dolce & Gabbana duos maybe like once or twice for each colour. When you're doing a project pan it really does minimise, you know for me it does minimise me getting the use of other things in my collection. I can't both rotate through and pan. Like, I just, I don't, there's not enough days that I wear makeup for that to happen. So I have to, when I set those project pan goals, prioritise those things. And that does mean other things fall by the wayside. So basically, that really helped me to be like, if you buy these jewels now from Chanel, even, you know, if I wasn't in no buy and I was going to be buying them, they're just going to sit there. Because I know from project panning, the highlight that's in this year's project pan for me is something that I have had in a year long project pan before and I hit pan on it. This year we have got to my August update of my project pan and we have a lot of pan but I've still got product left. So what that's telling me is that that's two year long project pans that product has been in before it's been nearly at a point where it's finished. So if I take from that, that highlight lasts two years in my collection and it's probably more depending on the size as well. So if I already own those Dolce & Gabbana jewels and I'm not getting the use out of them I would like to be getting, why would I buy backups? Do you know, it really, I think project panning, it gives you this unarguable quantifiable data of how long it takes you to actually use an item up. Not just in terms of time because it gives you in terms of the time like that highlight is taking me basically two years of usage to use up but it's a 3.5 gram highlight so I know then if I'm looking at say my Becca highlight which is 8 grams that I'm probably talking about four years to finish that one if we're talking gram for gram and it's not an exact science but it's definitely a non-negotiable indication that if I was to buy those Chanel shoes I wouldn't be using them this year because I need to finish my project pan I would probably prioritise the Dolce & Gabbana ones over them and probably that would take another two full years of project panning 
each of those so four years for the two duos so if I was going to be doing that that takes me then to the end of this year and then another four years of working on the Dolce and Gabbana products before I would touch the Chanel ones I would be buying them to use them in five years time basically yeah, like that's insane why would I do that but if I hadn't started project planning I wouldn't know that so I really have to thank project planning for making that one so easy to walk away from and the last one that I had was a different kind of challenge and um, so a youtuber that I really really love Amelia Rose's closet I will link her channel up below and um, she does a lot of handbag unboxings a lot of very nice like luxury handbags and um, she, she also just seems like such a lovely person I really really enjoy her channel so if you're looking for someone new to go watch I really really like her and um, but she did a haul quite recently on her channel sort of it was really towards the end of August it was closing in on the end of the no buy really liked what she had bought and really wanted it and I clicked through and I got into that scarcity mindset because the trousers were only the burgundy trousers that I really liked but only left in a size 12 which was what I wanted was the UK 12 and there was nothing left in anything bigger or smaller at that point so that scarcity mindset got me straight away I really wanted them and I was like oh but if, if I wait until my no buy is done they might be sold out and oh my word then I can't get them and that was amplified because they're a high street purchase I know that the high street is a much faster moving situation than like the vampire's wife dresses that I loved for so long because there that was a much slower fashion brand you know that you kind of knew if you liked one of their core dresses that you could you could save up for two years and it would still be there for you to buy it if the brand hadn't gone under which it has now but anyway whereas River Island's a different ball game you know I don't know if those trousers will still be available in a month and certainly if they're sold out in multiple sizes now that could mean they're like hey these have been a great seller and let's restock them or it could mean we never see them again you never ever know with the high street and I, I kind of wonder if on reflection when I've been doing my no buys and stuff if that's partly subconsciously why I've been stepping away from the high street a bit because I know it puts me into that scarcity mindset I live in Glasgow which actually it's a pretty good city for shopping I know if River Island sold out online of those trousers that I can go to there's two River Islands in Glasgow city centre there's one in Silverburn there's one in Brayhead so that's my, that's my four one of the four so say five river islands that I could look for these trousers in if I lived in a smaller town and my nearest city was further away there's maybe one that I could look in and if it's not online and it's not in that one then I'm, I'm scuppered whereas at the other end of the scale if I lived in London there's probably a river island on nearly every high street you know there's probably 30 river islands in London alone I was talking to one of my friends about this who did live in London for a long time about how that kind of scarcity mindset and she was like but there's always another one but when you don't live in London there's not always another one there's a finite amount of those shops and if it's sold out online and it's not in any of those shops you don't you you're probably not getting it unless you're very diligent about like vintage or ebay or whatever you're probably not getting it and that creates that mindset of being like this is my opportunity I didn't buy them I did close the tab I don't really have an answer for it other than that I'm still feeling, feeling a bit sulky and hard done by that I've not been able to buy them because I've been on a no buy. It's all good and well to say if you step away from the high street you maybe won't get that scarcity mindset in the same way but you are also talking about a much higher price point to get away from that scarcity mindset let's be 100% honest that's not always doable so I don't know how helpful it is for me to be pointing out that the high street creates a scarcity mindset to make you make purchases if stepping away from it isn't financially an option yeah it's just something to note something that I thought about something that I reflected upon and unfortunately yeah I'm still sulky about that one but the answer is I was on no buy so I couldn't buy them and I'm not going to be buying them anytime soon because I am extending the no buy so for the next steps the no buy is going on into September I did think it probably would although I only said it for the month of August and then said I was going to look at it at the end of the month I also said my my thought process was that I was probably going to be in a no buy through August September and October and that would give me a bit of leeway then for buying things again getting into Christmas and sort of festive times which is when I really always like what's in the shops and things you know I like winter clothes so yeah my thought process 
was that I would probably do a three month no buy August, September, October. I'm still going to take this on a month by month basis at the moment so I'm only saying September is still a no buy month. We're just another one month. Let me see how I get on with that. Let me see how I get through that. So just to also put my sort of motivation here so that I can revisit this if I need to. If I start struggling, which I didn't in August, but sometimes, you know, that way in August, it's such an, an overwhelming relief that I didn't struggle with it. Whereas I might start to struggle with it more the longer it goes on. I could either go that way that I sort of just fall into the behaviour of not having shopping behaviours and notice it less, or I could get more and more tempted. And as it gets goes on for longer, it could get more difficult. I don't know. We'll need to wait and see. So in case I do need this for my own benefit, let's go through why I am extending the no buy. Number one is that I bought so much in the first half of this year that I still feel slightly overwhelmed by it. I'm starting to feel slightly more on top of it. As I said, August was a super busy month and I don't know about you guys, but when I'm really busy like that, I basically am coming in at night, dumping my stuff, taking what I need the next day and going. And I am just naturally quite an untidy person. So after a month where I've barely been in the house and that I don't naturally pick up after myself anyway, things were a bit of a tip. So I kind of like hit that point at the sort of the last week in August. I finally had a night where I was just going to be in the house. I wasn't doing anything after work. I wasn't going out, whatever. And I tidied up. And it's probably the tidiest that my space has actually been in quite a while. Because everything that I sort of knew where it went, went back to that point. And I started being able to find space for the new things. Not completely, the back of my door is still a disgrace. There's still stuff I can't fit in my wardrobe. We're not on top of it, I'm not saying that. But I've started to find the spaces. And I couldn't identify those spaces before when I was constantly bringing more things in. The pile was just getting bigger. So trying to take an item out the pile and find a permanent home for it was just like, where do I even start? So I've started to find those spaces because I have stopped the flow of stuff coming in. I feel slightly, not completely, but slightly less overwhelmed by the sheer volume of stuff that I have. And I would like to get to a point where I don't feel overwhelmed at all, but I feel fine. And that needs a longer pause hit on it for me to manage that. On a side note, one of the things that motivates me too when I think about it is that the more stuff you have in terms of keeping a space clean and tidy because I'm one of these people who is not naturally tidy but I also function better when it's clean and tidy I think most people function better when it's clean and tidy let's be honest you know when you can see things when you know where things are that definitely works better for me but I'm not naturally that way inclined however like this afternoon for example I really want to clean my windowsill and that could if I had less stuff, be a really simple task. By the time I take everything off the windowsill, put it on the bed or on the floor or wherever I'm going to put it, clean the actual windowsill, clean the windows, and then pick it all back up and put it back on. You know, it's the when you have a volume of stuff that is uncontrollable to get around to try and tidy, it makes having a tidy and clean environment like so much more difficult and so much more time consuming to maintain. So that's part of it. And yeah, the time thing, also very relevant. As I said, this year I'm going to be quite time poor. So I don't want to be spending my time shopping over what I'm okay with. And I don't want to be spending my time maintaining my space. I don't have the time this year to waste time. So reason one is calmness, or lack of being overwhelmed. That's what we're aiming for. Reason two is time. And reason three is finance. So as I said, I'm going to be time poor this year and part of that is because I have decided to do not one but two new qualifications. So this year alongside working full time I'm also going to be doing 52 hours of education a week. I I am not, I have I've very much bitten off more than I can chew here and I'm aware of that but it's what we're doing. But anyway what that means is that I have two lots of course fees to pay so that is quite a lot of money for these postgraduate qualifications. I did pay a deposit but I've still got a balance to pay. I had a big bill unexpectedly in July about my transport and a restructuring of zones and stuff that's not really that interesting. And I've also, on a slightly more fun note, got lots of nice trips planned around Christmas. I am hoping to do Vlogmas again this year and 
hopefully I'll be taking you along in those vlogs on some of those trips but they're also all due to start being paid in sort of October time so basically I have a lot of things that are not necessarily budget things that I would share and talk to you about but a lot of things that I need to pay in the very near future so being on a no buy will also just have a knock-on effect financially that I will be spending less money on stuff to have that little bit more money for those things particularly because at the start of this year I did eat into my savings that would have covered things like holidays or the course fees that I wasn't really expecting to pay and then decided I was going to do it at the last minute. Did nothing like doing it at the last minute to make that decision. But anyway, that is everything for this video. This has been, I think I filmed for over an hour so I don't know what it's going to be like in the end product. Thank you so much for watching through to the end if you have done. I did try my budget last month but obviously there has been more than enough in this video as it is so I will share my August budget and September opening budget and plans in my next video. So thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate you spending all of this time with me and I will see you in my next one. Bye!